Hello everybody, thanks for stopping by Greg's Beer Reviews today. It's about that time. Let's go take that walk and see what's in the fridge today. Hello everybody, thanks for stopping by Greg's Beer Reviews today. This ought to be interesting. This is Graf Stolberg Dunkel. And uh, what this is, is a, uh, a, a, a Dunkel or a Dunkel Weiss if you, if you will. I don't know if it actually ha has uh, uh, any wheat in, in this beer or not, so I may have been uh, miscommunicating that. It is considered a Dunkel. Uh, I have not read anywhere or seen anywhere that they use wheat in the process of this. And being a Dunkel and not a Dunkel Weiss or, or whatever, uh, that may go against the German purity law of 1516. And I think that's what it has on the back of here. Produced, produced strictly according to the German purity law of 1516. And for, you, for you, those of you who don't know what that is, they passed a law in Germany in 1516 that beers could not have anything other than barley, hops, yeast, and water. Those four ingredients. Those four ingredients is all that was allowed in there. You could not put anything else in the beer. So this may not have any wheat in it. I may have mis misspoken by saying that. This has barley, water, yeast, and hops. And being from Germany, uh, it's going to have more of the European style hops. Uh, let me read what it has written here. There is no commercial description for this beer. This beer was sent to me by John. John, thanks again, brother, for sending me this beer. Uh, I have not had this one. Uh, and most of the beers that are produced over in Germany, they've been brewing those beers for hundreds of years. So they got it going on. They know what to do and how to do it. And most of the beers are pretty tasty. The, uh, the definition of a Munich Dunkel Lager, which is what this is, uh, says here, An old friend of Bavaria, Munich Dunkels are smooth, rich, and complex, but without being heady or heavy. They boast brilliant ruby hues from the large amount of Munich malts used, and these malts also lend a fuller-bodied beer. The decoction brewing process also lends much depth and richness to the beer. Bitterness is often moderate with just enough to balance out any sweetness. Hop varieties used tend to be of the German noble varieties, which are like uh, Tetanang and Hallertau uh, hops uh, when they use this. So more, uh, more common to the region over there than what we use over here, like the Cascade, the Centennial, the Amarillo, and Simcoe, and all that other stuff is just super pungent in your face. These are more herbal, floral type hops than what we have with the piney, grapefruity uh, characteristics that we go over here. Uh, food pairings for this beer, of course, from Germany, cuisine is German. The meat is smoked meat, game, and grill, but it would go well with uh, some cheese pairings on this also, guys. So, uh, for, for those uh, cheese buffs out there that like to have cheese with their beers. I don't do that too often. Like I said uh, a couple of reviews back, I don't, I don't drink a lot of beer with cheeses, but I'll give you that information just in case you want to. Uh, the glassware is the flute, Pilsner glass, or the pokel. This is, my, this is my Pilsner glass, or lager glass, however you want to call it. And the beer is not recommended for extended salary unless the ABV extends the average range. Well, it does not. This is a 5.1% ABV beer. And usually the beers that come across the pond from there usually have some kind of date or date code on them. I do not see anything on this. Uh, there may be something digitized on it that I cannot see. We'll look more closely uh, once we get the cap off of it. And speaking of that, let's do that right now. And to the glass we go.
looks like that's the perfect size glass for that. And I may have, uh, may have should have poured out a little more aggressive, but I, and this is a little bit bigger bottle than a 12 ounce. This is 16.9 fluid ounces, so this is almost a 17 ounce beer, so it's a little bit bigger bottle. And, and like I said, if I'd have had a massive hand, it would have been overflowing to get that in there. Over to the light, it is a rich red ruby color. A lot of bubbles streaming up. Looks very good in the glass there, guys. And it's a full glass, too. Let's get a nose on it. I'm getting a, a malty, biscuity smell. I am getting some grassiness in there. Most of your Pilsner's lagers I get that smell from. The hops are, like I said, they're more herbal and floral than more pungent, grapefruity, piney. Smells like a malty Pilsner. Got a kind of a sweet smell to it, too. Well, let's give it a hit and see what we got. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, John. Thank you, sir. And basically, what I what I was smelling is basically what I'm t I'm tasting. There is a slight grassiness to it, but it has a a nice heavy malt maltiness to it to go with that. This is like a this is like your typical Pilsner lager on steroids. It's a, a little darker, richer malt used uh, on this. So it's got a little, I don't know if I want to say a little, it's, it's got more taste and more flavor than your typical lighter Pilsner or, or lager is going to have. The grassiness is not off-putting though. I mean, it's, it's very well balanced. Not something that I would typically pick up or drink, because I don't drink a lot of lagers or pilsners anymore. I do like a Dunkel every, every now and then because it has a richer, uh, maltier body than those lighter versions of the pilsners and lagers. Very, very easy drinking. Very sessionable. And this bottle is almost big enough uh, where you could make this a two-person pour. You could pour half a glass uh, for yourself and another half of that. And I'm going to probably let the other half uh, drink some of this. Uh, it's got a nice, rich body. It really, really does. Very pleasant. A lot more body than your typical uh, liquor, liquors. Uh, Bloggers and uh, Pilsners are going to have. A lot richer to me. Very tasty, guys. So It's dark enough where I might have to fire up a cigar to go with this one, guys. So uh, Let's let it warm up. Take it back and let her taste it a little bit. I won't sip on this one too long because I like the Pilsners and the, the Lagers and the Dunkles. Uh, not to get actually up to room temperature. Uh, to me, just my opinion, they're harder for me to enjoy once I get room temperature. Now the ales and stuff, I can let them get up to room temperature. I like to start off with them dark, just like I do my stouts, and let them warm up to room temperature to finish them off. But usually the Pilsners and Lagers and stuff, I drink them a little on the quicker side so they don't get to room temperature. Uh, to me, they get to, uh, too harsh once they get up to room temperature. But this one probably will not with the roasted malt that they've used in this and the, the Munich malt that they've used in this one. So stick around, I'll bring it back and we'll do the final chug on this one, guys. All right, guys, I'm back, got just a little left. This is, this is a, a decent beer. It's not outstanding or nothing to write home about, but it's a decent beer. The biggest problem I have with this is it has no date on the bottle. And for a 5.1% Dunkel, it's almost like an IPA. That's a low ABV beer. And you kind of need to know how old the beer is. I mean, if this is a fresh bottle, it's going to taste a lot better than it is a year or two down the road, guys. So, uh, with that being said, let's see the final chug. I 
a nice malty, rich caramel toffee tasting in the beer. Very well made beer, uh, low ABV, very sessionable, very drinkable. I enjoyed this beer, but I have a problem with them not having a date on it. It's very unusual for these beers that come across from over there. Just about everything you see in Europe and Germany and, and England and all have dates on them. So I don't, I don't understand why they think they can get away with it by doing an export version which comes to the States and not putting that information on there. So it gives an additional shelf life, of course. Uh, that's probably the biggest reason. If there's no law telling them they have to, well, we don't have to, we won't put a date on it, and we can let this, you know, that this can sit on the shelf for a while, and we'll sell more of it. So that's that's the biggest thing I can say bad about this beer. The taste of the beer is is pretty tasty. The uh, the flavors in this dunkel, uh, like I said, caramel, toffee. A nice uh, Munich malt in there, a nice bittering profile to match it up, which tells me it's a well-made beer, but we have no idea how old this beer is, guys. So that's the biggest drawback I have to to them not dating the bottles on these low ABV beers. So very tasty beer. I did enjoy it, John. Thanks again for sending this one. I have not had this one before, but uh, this company, Grath Stolberg Dunkel, you need to put a date on your damn bottles, guys. Uh, it doesn't matter whether it's coming to the United States or it's being sold over there. That's the information that we need to know. Uh, so that's going to cost them a great point. I was probably going to give this a B plus, but it's going to get the B today. This gets a 6 for me today, guys. Uh, I don't understand why they think they can get away with that. So it's, it's beyond me, just like it is from the craft brewers over here that don't put dates on their bottles. Maybe one day we'll, uh, we'll have dates on everything and uh, they won't try to put the hoodoo on us and, and, and this stuff, let this stuff set on the shelves for, for months if not years at a time not knowing how old the beer is and, and you be the next sucker that comes in and buys the beer. So, And I don't understand that too and, and once the beer gets a certain age it's going to lose a lot of its qualities. And if you go in and you spend good money for a beer like this, I don't know what John paid for this, but if you, if you paid three, five, six, seven, eight dollars for a bottle and it's been sitting on the shelf for two years and you try it and you don't like it, you're not going to buy it again. So they've lost a customer there. So I don't know what the mentality is of that. I guess if they think, well, if it's selling one, that's all we want to do anyway. So I just don't understand that logic. So the beers need to have dates, especially the low ABV beers like this. So uh, at 5.1 percent to how old the beer is. So enough harping on that guys. Let's see what everybody else thinks. We'll go over to uh, Beer Advocate first and Beer Advocate says 82 which is in the low B range to me. It's almost a B minus and as far as I'm concerned as far as that grade goes. So, uh, Rate Beer says ooh, Rate Beer says 47 overall and 71 in the style, which even drops it down even lower than that. That would, that would be a 4 to a 5 as far as I'm concerned. So I may be a little over generous given it the grade that I gave it, but uh, I thought it was still rather tasty. So hopefully it was a fairly fresh bottle, but without the date we have no way of knowing. So, but John still, I appreciate you sending this to me. I did enjoy it. The other half liked it too. Not my typical style of beer. And he does send me a lot of these imported beers and stuff that uh, I can't get or haven't seen around here. And I do enjoy uh, tasting them and reviewing them for, the, for you guys. So uh, It was okay beer. Nothing nothing super exciting, but glad I got to try it. This one was from Stoll, Graf Stolberg out of Germany. Uh, I know they know what they're doing over there, but they need to put the date on it as far as I'm concerned. So guys, if you've had this one from Graf Stolberg, give me some comments back on this one. Whether you liked it, didn't like it. Uh, there, I may even have some subs that, that live over there in that area that might give me more information. Well, our beer, a lot of times they'll say, well, our beers all have dates on them over here. And I don't understand why we don't have them when they're coming from over there, over here. So, uh, uh, I guess they can, like I said, they can get away with not putting it on because it's not a law that they have to have it on over here. And they just don't date them to give it a longer shelf life. That's the only thing I can figure out while they're doing that. So, with that being said, guys, let me know what you think of if you've had it. Hit that like button, rate, comment, subscribe, and let's go see what's in the fridge tomorrow. Hope you can join me then. See you.